You perfected your wardrobe. What about the stuff not everybody gets to see? If you've been settling for store-bought underwear five packs, we got something that's going to change your life for the better. Talking about me undies. Now, what is me undies? Oh, just seriously soft, feel-good undies delivered right to your door. They're designed in LA and made from sustainably sourced micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Softer than soft, luxurious undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and adventurous patterns, so you can tailor your undies to your personal style. And you know what? You can save time and money with a monthly subscription. I've got a few pairs of me undies. Man, they are real comfortable. Every time I work my way through the laundry and I got those me undies there that I'm going to put on my body, ooh, I get real excited because they are comfy. If you're not ready for a subscription, you, that's okay. You can save. This is because me undies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use your special URL, meundies.com slash doughboys and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. I know you. You deserve it. Do something nice for yourself. Try me undies. You never spoil yourself. You're too worried about taking care of other people. You got to take care of you. You're the protagonist of your own life. Make sure you are comfortable. Go to MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. That's right. MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. Hey, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. What's going on? A whole lot. We have a podcast. We do? Yes. Oh, my God. It's big news. It's called Los Feliz, the podcast. What's it about? It's about Los Feliz. It's about our neighborhood? Yeah, it's about oh, just local fun. goings on, stories that you wow. love, stories that you want to know about, coffee places opening a lot up. Of coffee places. We just want to be your source for all things Los Feliz. Yeah, so tune in. Tune in to Apple Podcasts on May the 24th. We're on the Feral Audio. Network. It's called Feral, and you need to learn how to say it. I, I can't. I'm Morgan Murphy. And I am Robin Shore. On Feral Audio, even though you can't pronounce Feral. Feral. <laughs> Commercial backlash. That's what a 27-year-old Steven Spielberg blamed when his hit film Jaws only received four Oscar nods in a 1976 video documenting him watching the Academy's nominations announcement. Spielberg had allowed a TV crew to film him viewing the press conference, and this prototype of the now common reaction video trope shows the director as a cocky, brash kid who confidently predicts a sweep of the major categories. Given his current reputation as one of cinema's all-time greatest craftsmen, it's a disconnect to realize for the first part of his career he was considered akin to his generation's Michael Bay, a talented director who made crowd-pleasers with limited artistic merit. But despite Jaws's semi-snub at the Oscars, it proved to be one of the most enduring, influential films of all time. Adjusted for inflation, it grossed over a billion dollars in its initial theatrical run, and is considered the original summer blockbuster. And it had another lingering side effect, cementing in Americans a fear of sharks, which, based on the raw numbers, is among the least rational of all cultural paranoias. Sharks only kill six people worldwide each year. Choking on food kills over 3,000. Meanwhile, shark fishing for meat and medicine kills upwards of 100 million of the predatory fish. In 1992, restaurateur Steve Paperno, inspired by his trips to Mexico, opened a taco shop in the L.A. neighborhood of Sherman Oaks. With its emphasis on fresh, organic ingredients, the restaurant quickly caught on with the health-conscious Californians who craved Mexican food. Now, with two dozen locations across the Golden State, as well as Nevada and Oregon, the name of Paperno's chain evokes not an item on the menu, but his customers, who prey on its tacos, burritos, and bowls. For with our unending appetites for consuming all varieties of life forms, it is mankind who is the ultimate predator. This week on Doughboys, Sharkies. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. We're a production of feralaudio.com. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, Michael Big MacDonald, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. <laughs> I'm bigger than Mike McDonald? I guess, I guess well, Big, oh, Mac, Big Mac. Like Big Mac within there, sandwich in there. Oh, all right. Yeah. But, uh, but Mike McDonald already is like a big Is guy. he a huge guy? Isn't he a big guy? I think he's like a physically large man. Yeah, so am I. I'm not sure if he's calling you bigger. I mean, you might be a little bigger than him. What the fuck, man? <laughs> he's, Michael McDonald's not huge, right? The um, the man is the ultimate predator. I'm gonna look. Uh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. To catch a predator is a, uh, <laughs> they catch men. I know where you're going with this. I'm trying to say you're, yeah, you're gonna I be. Know. You're saying I'm gonna be on to catch a predator. The that's that show. With Chris I've, yes, you're gonna be on to catch a predator someday. Right. You didn't you say you've always wanted to be on that show? <laughs> I want to be on that show, but as bait. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, real quick, that roast was courtesy of MB Cambria. If you've got a roast for Mitch at the top of the show, roastspoonman at gmail.com is the address. 
I'd like to use you as bait, shark bait. That is, <laughs> you're afraid of. Sh- we'll get into this in a little bit, but mm-hmm. you're you've got a you've got yeah, a sharks, shark fear yourself. Sharks should be terminated. <laughs> uh, they're di- I mean they're they're like dinosaurs, you know, like a the, like they're monsters, ancient they're, they're, creatures. They're, they're ancient creatures. Also, I get your choking thing. More people choke or whatever, but mm-hmm. I'd be like laughing as I choked. If I was getting eaten by a shark. That's like the more you'd be bitten, you'd be bitten in two. You that, that's like a terrible. You'd be laughing as you choked. <laughs> yeah, probably. Like, like you've got like a hot dog lodged down your mm-hmm. throat. That's right. And you're like, you got a smile creeps up to your ears as you bre- <laughs> as you're, you're unable to breathe and your brain is deprived of oxygen. Tell me that you won't be smiling as you as, <laughs> as you know that you're dying. Oh yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that moment. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Here's a drop. Okay, you know. Okay. Just the hardest direction. I feel like Jeff's got a big dick. Voluminous wet dream. Look, I think minions are great. Uh, Stuart has one eye. He's the cutest. Cranking off my big old dick. Hashtag table freak. That was a good one. A lot of that was, fun. That was a lot of fun. That was from Franny. We know Franny. She's she she's great. At Trophy Uncle. Active on Twitter. Franny Comstock. Yes, very funny. Good job, Fran. That was great. Good job, Fran. Oh god damn it! Are you playing? What what's going on? What is, Something is playing what are you afterwards. Doing? What are you it's, playing? It's, it's stopped. <laughs> People got mad at me last time because they said they were like, "Mitch doesn't know how to like use technology correctly," and it was our aux cord. We Liger, had the wrong kind of aux here. cable. We had the wrong right. kind of uh, the wrong kind of aux cable. Yes, yeah. Dustin confirmed. We have like I guess I don't know. Hey, Dustin, was it? We have a stereo one. We need a mono or vice versa. Just need a stereo. We don't have. We have a mono cable, and it's so right. trying to output a, a stereo signal from the phone. So that's why you we only got the one channel on the drop we played last week. It's not your fault. It's, it's not, not my user fault. error. It's not. This is like a uh, Goodwill hunting. You're, you're telling me that it's not. <laughs> my fault <laughs> which i appreciate um speaking of which quickly before we introduce our guest my mom is in town and i want to apologize. it's been it's been a crazy mom week right uh mom i, I i'm trying to i'm trying to pronounce it correctly because i'm i'm in my head but you're saying it fine um my mom is in town and we, we've been eating some uh some great food and the last night uh we went to kispaka uh, C H I space S P A C C A, which is like a part of like the 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 Moza group. Yeah, Mario Batali's restaurants, restaurants yes. out here. Mm-hmm. And it was it was amazing. And uh, it's more of like a steakhouse focused concept, right? Italian steakhouse. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Killer Mike sat next to us. Wow. And it was it was like I've never I've never had like a like. I've never wanted to say hello to a celebrity like more in my like uh, like my mom was like go say hi to him and she didn't know who he was right and then she was gonna try to tell him to order the burrata and I was like mom don't do anything don't like don't interrupt his meal this is embarrassing and she's like who is he and I was like he's a famous rapper he's bit and he's big and my mom went notorious that's what she said and I oh, was like oh boy no notorious pig died 20 years ago <laughs> literally like 1995 yes so long ago someone born someone born uh the year biggie died can now legally drink at a bar yes they're already they're cooler than you and i already <laughs> my so my, and it was one of those embarrassing moments but i had never like uh in my life, like not, not never in my life. I've, I've had this experience a lot, Nick, and I'm sure that you can, you know, the same feeling of like, yeah, you know, when you're like at a dance or like you want to talk to a girl at a bar or something and then you like, don't do it like uh, where you're like, I should go talk to that person. But mm-hmm. then you, 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 you get, you get freaked out. Oh yeah. I'm all about inaction. Yes. That, and, and it was, it felt like that kind of all of, like in right. high school or even, I remember at the end of college, there was a dance and it felt like our senior year, there was like a dance and it was so pathetic that it felt so much like high school. Not only for me, but just for everyone. I was like, this is like, we're all still children or right. something. But even still, that like I've had those moments in my mind where I've just been like, talk to that person. And then I and I haven't done it. Yeah. And Killer Mike was was one of those situations. I, I really wanted to say, like, I love I love you. But I but I but I couldn't I couldn't do it. I want to tell yeah. him that I thought his uh his style is bitching because he raps about that in a song. Uh, and I think that it would be cool. I, mm. I think that we'd be friends. 
I guess, I guess my concern would be if you'd gone up to Killer Mike and said, hey, man, I think your style is bitching, he would have quit rap music. <laughs> he would have known that I was talking about his... Right. Don't forget that... Listen, even though I'm a loser, I'm still cooler than you, Nick. Let's not forget that. <laughs> you think you're cooler than me? I think we're about equally cool. I think I'm cooler than you. I think it depends on... I, I think in it, some people will rank us differently, but I think we're about the same cool level in society. No, this size. is garbage. I am cooler than you. Okay. If I have anything, I am cooler than you. I mean, I guess how, how do you... How do you, how do you how do you level? I mean, being cool also, as you find out when you get older, isn't cool right. at all. Nothing is cool. But I'm cooler than you. I'm a big fat party animal. <laughs> I'm more the party animal type. But you're not a big fat party animal. But in some ways, I am. I I also can be though. I get you. You can be like. I mean, you're like a charismatic guy. Yeah. You you can be like the center of attention. You can entertain a room. You're cooler than me. I don't. I think some people might perceive me to be cooler than you. This I think we're about the same talk. level. Look. Either way, we're we're like trying to argue, you know, we're, 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 this is like arguing which ant is bigger. You know what I mean? It's like either way, it doesn't really matter. Neither of us is cool, but I think we're about the same relative level of cool. I thought I was cool. I thought that's all. I thought I was a cool guy at one point. I think some people perceive you as cool. Ah, oh, God. Look, let's introduce our guest. She'll say. And also, she'll give us the answer of who is cooler. <laughs> uh, someone very cool is with us, the host of the podcast, This Feels Terrible, and Human Conversation, which are right here on Feral Audio. Aaron McGathy is back. Hi. Thanks for having me back. Oh, Thank Aaron. you for being here, Aaron. We're who so is thrilled. cooler? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I mean, the party animal thing. Mm -hmm. is a is a thing i like this Hell i want to yeah. i want to point out the setup for the listener mm -hmm. you have this setup <laughs> like a dining room table where mm -hmm. the parents are facing each other and fighting and the kid is sitting in the middle <laughs> I, am, I am staring at a wall and you two are facing uh -huh. each other right yeah it's I a terrible just, setup we've We've had people ask to, I and I asked, I was like, would you mind sitting there in the middle? I'd asked you that before yeah. this started. And we've had people be like, uh, can I sit in like that other chair? Like, <laughs> right. they want to switch with me. Yeah. But I want to be away from Weiger. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of works, but I, I mean, like, there's not, we haven't figured out the best setup. Maybe there's a better way to, I mean, I need you, to get rid of this table. Let's be honest. I yeah. was, I was looking for a new table, Weiger. It's hard though. It's shopping is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shopping is not easy. I found out. I've been, I've been looking for a couch, found the perfect couch. It's filled with feathers. Guess what? I'm allergic to oh, feathers. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh man. Very cool. Work. Very cool thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was cool, Weiger. I could chug beers and stuff. I could all, chug all I beers. know is that the coolest thing is arguing about who's cooler. <laughs> I think that that's probably a mark of coolness. God damn it, McGathy. You're cooler than us. We I know, we get it. But then between us, the losers, who's the cooler loser? <laughs> I mean, like, name a scenario. Like, I think that Nick would be cooler at, like, a meeting. Hell yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think Mitch would be cooler... It's so weird staring at a wall. And I know it's, I know it's a, not a we visual should, we medium. Should put, we should put a photo of... Uh, can Aaron I take the mic out of the stand? Yeah, you of can course take the you mic can. Out. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Yeah, of course. I'm so excited to be here. And now I'm like, now I'm nervous now that we're rolling. Well, I because you had to stare at a blank white wall. We should yeah, put a picture of Nick this. and I on the wall. Here's the thing. There's not a great setup. Mm -hmm. We this uh, we kind of settled on this because Mitch and I talk at each other a lot. And it, right. felt like it, it, like, it felt like when we were like, Mitch was sitting where you are now. We're kind of like, we're kind of in a T formation. When Mitch, Mitch was sitting where you are now, we would like sort of be talking with each other. And then the guest would feel excluded over there. Right, right, So right. kind of like having the, the guest in the crossfire kind yeah. of where our firing lines are going have, seem to work a little better have you heard of round tables <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for a new table we're gonna get a new table also it's weird nick that you say make the t formation to me and the guest when they walk in <laughs> You like don't people, think that's cool. <laughs> you think people expect? You know, I I think fans online will figure out who is cooler. Mm -hmm. I think you were probably cooler with women at one point. I am very bad right. with dating and stuff like that. But you're no slouch. Yes, as I've gotten older, I've got I've I've gotten more confidence. I'd say. Uh, but does that count? I mean, an eighteen-year-old Wagner and eighteen-year-old Mitch would be a funny combo to compare who's cooler. <laughs> yeah, and I, to kiss. And to, yes, actually, that would probably be the best case. <laughs> figure things out quickly. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, we, I guess you're right. We're both losers. Is the answer to that question? Right. Yeah. But you know, there. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. Again, different people have different. You're saying that there's some losers below us that think we're cool. 
Yes, I think there are definitely <laughs> losers below us who think we are cool. Who do you guys think Koalic. is cool? Who do you who do you think like who are your your cool heroes? Oh man, mm. uh, aside Eugene? from Killer Mike, Eugene Cordero. Okay, yeah, Eugene's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you came up with that so fast, <laughs> and, and you're like it made you like nervous. Now you're adjusting your shorts. <laughs> well, I hope Eugene hands. doesn't waste his time with our, and listen to our podcast, right? But I like thinking of him hearing this and being like, Ugh, what the fuck? <laughs> Eugene is dorks. is very cool. Yeah, I was on a cool sketch dude. team with him, and I was like terrified of him. And whenever we would be kind of like standing with each other and had to mm-hmm. make conversation, I'd be like, oh. So so stupid, Aaron. Stop saying stupid stuff to cool Eugene. <laughs> right. <laughs> some of some of those New York guys, mm. they got a swagger that I that I yeah. that I that I. But I can. It's be, the water. I can, mm. It is the water. <laughs> it is From the, the water. The pizza to the people. <laughs> Larry King, the coolest. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, who's my? I think like Trey Parker, and Matt Stone are the coolest, and that, and then they're also not cool cool i guess but they it's are a different cool. sort of cool yeah, but they're sort of cool people perceive them as cool and there's certain like there's a coolness to being a someone who creates something you admire mm-hmm. like that's like cool yeah i think the camel cigarette camel is the coolest he, oh yeah he actually is Joe one camel of the is fucking rad <laughs> i have my friend anthony tufo back home and he's mm-hmm. just a classic cool guy yeah i love a cool my dude. friends from quincy are now also gonna make fun of me. but anthony is cool he wears leather jacket. he's a cool guy he sounds cool he, he is very you would you would you would love him weiger oh yeah. actually i know someone we can agree on mm. tom cruise weiger and i both think tom cruise <laughs> is fucking cool he's I, the coolest I, i'm really excited about that mummy movie i am too yeah I think me it's too be good the mu- yeah I like, I, can I can I say something? Well, I don't know because I don't know if this is a. I think this is a spoiler, mm. but oh, I don't. Yes. I, this is also a speculative spoiler. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, a spec spoil. So He's like, the mummy. Yes, that's really? the speculative oh. spoiler I heard. Is that Tom Cru- <laughs> yes. at the end of the mummy? Tom Cruise gets the powers of the mummy and becomes the new mummy, but he's like kind of like a good mummy because oh. they're gonna make a they're gonna make a mummy based. Yes, by the way, <laughs> this rumor yes. in quotations <laughs> comes from Bugmane, <laughs> our friend Bugmane. When has Bugmane's been wrong about anything? I mean, he probably is right. Yeah. On this if one. if Tom Cruise becomes the mummy, is he gonna be like a, a little mummy because he's so small? Hmm, I think so. You think they'll make him because because mummies are always super tall. Yeah. That's a good point. They don't really make a point. They but you know the language of cinema. They use forced perspective. So Tom Cruise does not go on. Yeah. Tell me about the language of cinema. <laughs> he but he, doesn't appear, he never appears like a short guy on the in the, in the movies. Right? He's always like a normal sized guy. Mm. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna make a point of making him a small mummy. And live die right, repeat yeah. has a sequel coming. Live die repeat. And repeat? Is that what it was? Yeah, what? I don't like that title. And repeat again? What was? It? I forget. Yeah, live, die, repeat, and repeat. Live, die, repeat, and repeat. It's, I, 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 it's funny because they had it, they, like a part of the reason they thought that the first one did bad was because of the title. They changed the title, right? And they because like, it was Edge of Tomorrow. Right. It's a great, great, great movie. I yeah, love it. It's I like it one of the best that. action movies in the last decade. It's awesome, right? Why well, you would agree with that? I've never seen it. What the fuck? I know, I know. I've heard it's what? great. I've just never actually watched what it. What is wrong? Whoa. What the fuck? Why are you serious? <laughs> You're incensed. It was you an undersea movie. Tom I'm one of those people who haven't seen it. Yeah, I know. I do love Tom Cruise. I haven't seen every single one of his movies. Do you hate women in dynamic roles? Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> is that? <laughs> Look. Uh, no, I. No. Why would I you're, hate that? That's you're great. saying this to Mr. Problematic, the guy who <laughs> is afraid to say or do anything. You're afraid to walk down the street because you think you might offend someone. Now, I, that's not true. That's I, hyperbolic. I, I think th- I think that it comes from a good place, and I think that it's good right. to think that way in a lot of ways. But you, you mm. you're saying this is like throwing a man a worst fear in a man's face right yeah. now. Yeah. Why is that, Nick? Why are you so afraid? Because you are the whitest man there is. Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> I think I I understand that I occupy a position of privilege, and mm-hmm. I think I also know that I am like it, you know. And there's nothing more cliche than being a white man in the comedy community. You know, that's just mm-hmm. like that's like the default, and it's and we're overrepresented. And I think there's probably the last thing I would want to do is something where it's like, oh, that's offensive to somebody, or that's needlessly making things harder for someone who is already in a in a position where things aren't aren't as easy as they are for me. You know what I mean? So like I'm just I'm I'm overly aware, I'm hyper aware of that. Mm-hmm. And then so I try, I probably overanalyze things to the point of like, hmm, or what kind of comment am I making here? Where is this coming from? And, and also I've like as I've gotten older, I've become a lot less funny than I used to be. So like I have to have like this intellectual uh, like 
that that's how I kind of busy myself or make myself feel like I have anything left to contribute is that I have like this intellectual approach to humor to like, Oh, let's make sure I'm doing this responsibly since I'm no longer good at it. You know what I mean? I think this is, there's a lot of weird things in what you just said, but Erin, I want to hear what you had to say. <laughs> I was just, I was just curious, Nick, if you were visited by some sort of race and gender changing wizard or, mm-hmm. or fairy, would you, would you take them up on that? Like, as a white man in the comedy community feeling like you're you're uh, a dime a dozen would you would you would you switch race <laughs> hmm. or gender and what race would you like to be hmm. speaking of he's, problematic he's 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 looking deep into <laughs> yeah. nothingness right now and thinking about this i have a two word answer fuck no <laughs> 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 no i mean I, I, that, I that's its own thing but like no i think I'm, i i am who i am and i'm gonna ride this this out in this hypothetical scenario hmm. right right because hey, also too this is this is easy right this is the easiest i mean because i'm also i'm not only am i white and a mm. man i'm also straight and i'm six one and i'm like I've, i'm a lean bill i like I've, everything is pretty i don't i'm not I, I don't have a disability things are pretty easy for me i have all the you got it, you got some good stuff going yeah the difficulty level is very easy for me i'm just sort of like coasting along. you're cool not as cool as me and you got a lot of other and you, it, it, but but also just be the funniest nick weiger you can be hmm. mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. do the best nick weiger can do right hmm <laughs> I think that I really got in your head with this whole yeah, discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm extra in my head now. Uh, no. Well, don't be... Sorry. Any, it's, no, it's no one's fault. That's my fault. No, it's no one's fault. I, th- I, think, I, think that it, I think it's good that you're aware of that stuff, and I think that we all should be. I didn't expect, any, I didn't expect the answer that you gave, which is a very well-thought-out answer that you think of a lot. But, but then uh, the, you, you can relax, too, a little yeah, bit. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a really embarrassing moment yesterday at Jersey Mike's, um, where where everything embarrassing happens. <laughs> uh, I was getting I was I was ordering a wrap and this father and his child came in and they were African American and his child who I assumed was a boy uh, was just like the most beautiful happy child mm. and in my head I wanted to say like oh your 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 son is so sweet or so like your son right. your so, you have such a cute son and then I was like mm-hmm. oh but what if it's not his son what if it's his daughter and then i was like i was about to say oh you have such a beautiful daughter and then i'm like why am i saying beautiful why am i like sexualizing this child so mm-hmm. what came out of my mouth was good child <laughs> <laughs> just looked at me and just nodded and I was just, ah. good child for for eating i am a witch right yeah. that's like how it's like when an alien comes to earth and then they're just like learning the ways of people that's like how they form sentences at first yeah. so, so that's i, I mean and basically what you just said right there is is what I fear with Nick sometimes right is going over the and thinking of it too much to become then then that becomes a thing of thinking of it too much yeah I think but we're all kind of in but, that space but you're right I mean like last night when my mom thought Killer Mike was notorious B.I.G. <laughs> I was mortified and I was like shut the fuck up and I was like embarrassed and didn't yeah. want him to hear that because that is insulting and by the way it's just before Mother's Day don't tell your mom to shut the fuck up <laughs> She's been here for quite a few days. I love my mom. And also, she was on the double. We can announce that because this comes out after the double. Yeah, absolutely. She was on the double. And she's, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen because it hasn't happened yet, but it will be interesting. Uh, um, we're talking about this in the sense that we're recording this before we're recording that, that episode, right, yes. but that episode will uh, already be out. Look, time is fucking crazy, guys. That's mm-hmm. the real thing, man. Mm-hmm. Live, fucking die, time. repeat, repeat. See, I, exactly. And speaking <laughs> of which, McGather, you've been gone. We miss you. You're, you're, uh, yeah. you're, you're overseas. You you're, live in Ireland. You're in, you're in Ireland. I am in Ireland. Um, yeah. How are things going over there? Uh, this podcast is the only thing that's been keeping me going. I get, <laughs> I get oh all my, my news from oh the Doughboys. Uh, I hear Trump, Trump bad. Trump bad. Podcast. Yeah. Trump is bad. Yeah. I mean, we're not, <laughs> we're not breaking any new ground by saying that. Mm-hmm. That's also, we, we've just, we've decided to not be, poli- we shouldn't talk about any, I mean, we shouldn't talk at all. <laughs> yes, we shouldn't. Do you think at some point Doughboys will just be, people will turn it on and it'll be an hour and a half of silence? <laughs> <laughs> just some comforting white noise to play. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I mean, 
I don't know if we we're necessarily making a thing of like we're not going to get into politics here, but I think mm-hmm. we're maybe there there ha- because fuck, you don't you don't know whatever. where you don't know where you land really. Yeah, we is don't that know the, the problem. Con- <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> you just want to. What is? Let's give him a chance. I'm still undecided. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. We've had this discussion off air about, mm-hmm. like, what we should. And I think that's just the main thing is just the reaction we get from people is that sometimes uh, it, there's so much politics out there and it's so unavoidable. And I feel yeah. like so, like sometimes entertainment is an escape from that. And mm-hmm. then when it's also coming through in your entertainment, it just sometimes that just feels like it's unrelenting because it is unrelenting. Sure, yeah. It's just like it's it's just omnipresent. And it's a it's oppressive, like to your mind to just constantly being like to just be like even like I'm gonna be watching a I don't know I, I like I can't not you can't not be thinking of it you know mm-hmm. what I mean mm-hmm. so I think we we've maybe made a not super conscious but a semi conscious effort to not talk as much about that sort of shit on here but if it comes up it comes up whatever yeah right yeah. am yeah, I, I saying that correctly no, I, I, I did listen to some Joe Boy's episodes like post election like it's 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 really sad I mean with anything like listening to everybody just joking about Trump winning and yeah then it happened. Nick was wrong on the election I and did. also I was wrong about that and I see I was mad at you I said see you can be wrong about stuff even though I wasn't right about it either <laughs> but I was right about the Nintendo switch yeah these are two I had two big whiffs last year mm-hmm. I said that the I said that Clinton Hillary Clinton was a lock look that I was not alone in that that was like 99 percent of the people were saying mm-hmm. that um but I also said that Nintendo switch was gonna bomb and I said no way <laughs> Mitch was so confident in the switch and look I I thought I had history on my side gamecube underperformed mm-hmm. we was a hit but it was a hit because it was a gimmick wii u bombed mm-hmm. the switch seemed confusing like i think people were uh, like to me it seemed the marketing made it unclear whether it was a portable or whether it was a a, a traditional console and, and it kind of, is, name it's of kind of some, both it's the name of an old-timey weapon right it, yeah. switch yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you uh, if you uh, disobeyed your father in the 19th century, you're gonna get hit with a switch. And so, like, <laughs> so we had that. So I had all that. I thought all of that evidence was pointing in my favor, and so I made the call, and I was wrong. And you were confident all the way. You said the switch was gonna be a hit. It's the mm-hmm. hit. It's burning up the charts, especially in Japan. Uh, you big look at time NBT, in Japan. NPD charts in Japan. It's all switch. PS4 isn't even charting anymore. Um, McGathy, now who's cooler? <laughs> <laughs> Should I do my cool meter? Throughout? I guess I guess Mitch it's is boiling a little hot. Whoa. <laughs> Red. Uh, did you? Whenever, whenever I hear the word "cool," what I picture is wheels from Burger King. Oh hell yeah! He was one yeah. of the cool. He was one of the coolest. <laughs> my, uh, I, I think I've said this on this before, but my friend Justin Kylie, my best friend growing up, and, and still my best friend Justin Kylie, great guy. Uh, he. Uh, he got like Burger King Cakes Club stuff in the mail till like he was like 15 or something where he was or like what? 16. It was like way too old that like he got stickers or yeah, like he, he joined the Burger King Kids Club and then like they just kept sending him stuff. And I think I probably was a part of it, <laughs> but he got stuff forever. Like even still where like you didn't like the character, like the characters weren't visible at the store or anything anymore, but he still got. Burger oh, King Kids Club stuff is why are you looking up Burger King Kids Club? Yeah, I was trying to remember who else was in it besides Wheels. Wheels, there's Data. <laughs> was there? <laughs> that sounds is, right. Is it from Star them? Trek. Uh, yeah. Then Peggy there's uh, <laughs> Spock. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. There's Lingo. Yeah. What is Link- Kid Vid? Oh, Link- Kid Vid is the big one. Lingo looks like he just is a guy. I don't. I mean, he just looks like he's hanging out. He's a guy with a vest. That seems like his uh, main okay. attribute. Was Data one of them? Uh, I can't. There, this is a hard. This is a small pick, so it's hard to read. There's IQ, who looks like a smart little ginger kid. Oh, I think right. I was thinking of. Do I? Do we say IQ? No, we said wheels. Wheels. I think I was thinking of IQ. Yeah, snaps. Um, the token female, Jaws, and then JD is the dog. Oh, and it looks like Boomer has a little football jersey. JD is wearing a helmet that looks like the helmet you put on babies when they're born to reshape their heads. Right. <laughs> And has goggles, too. He's got this whole Maybe, evil Knievel thing yeah. going on. Maybe that's what's happening with JD. Uh, we, we're not sure. Do you remember the Snapple lady? Yes. Uh, Who's that? Like, there, there, there's, there are these commercials, like, uh, when I was in the fourth or fifth grade with the Snapple lady who was like sitting at a oh, desk. Oh, yes. And I had a neighbor who would bring Arby's to school every day and would every day have this weird ritual with her sauces. And she had a big lisp and would just be like, horsey sauce. And anyway, she was obsessed with the <laughs> Snapple lady. And she sent the Snapple lady a letter asking her if she would come to her birthday party. 
And the Snapple lady and Snapple, I don't know if it was actually the Snapple lady, uh-huh. was was so moved that they just kept on sending her Snapple stuff. And then wow. she became like a pen pal with the Snapple lady, like past her being the Snapple lady. That's Whoa, crazy. That's crazy. The Snapple yeah. lady went on to be in Celebrity Fit Club. Oh. Um, and then she, I, I haven't, you haven't really seen much of her since. All right. I think the Snapple lady was in Celebrity Fit Club. VH1's. Oh, that's what it was. The v- I was trying to place, what the fuck was that show? So yeah, it was on VH1. That's or was right. she in like the Celebrity House? I think she was in the Celebrity Fit Club. I, I forget. I wonder if she still has Snapple money. Because that was back when people got like a billion dollars yes. for every commercial, right? Yeah. One billion dollars. That's, that, wh- wh- why did that change? It's a weird thing to change. Yeah. What, why do rates go down? Yeah, what the hell? Because I, there's just more, like commercial rates shouldn't go down. If it's like, if it's played as much as, you know what I mean? Like if a campaign is played on every channel, the, the rates shouldn't go down, right? Look, I mean, that's like, that's like with anything, though. It's just like inequality is growing, and so mm-hmm. the wages of labor go down, and then, and, and you know, the actors are the labor, so they find ways, like, we can pay these people less and less and less, yeah. and we can mm-hmm. we can do them pay, we can do buyouts instead of giving them, like, a residual rate, you know? We can do this non-union in Mexico instead of making it union in the States. There, there's all, uh, they just keep finding new ways. These corporations keep finding new ways to fuck us, <laughs> man. Fucked That's up. What they just keep finding ways to fuck us. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I bet you she still probably does have some. I hope she does. I hope, I hope she I does, hope she's too. Living. If you're listening, does. Snapple Lady. Yeah. She yeah. Was, she's yeah. nice. If you're listening, Snapple Lady, hashtag, <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and if uh, if you're not listening, Snapple Lady, uh, hashtag, cap on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if she's not listening, she'll tweet at us, cap mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Okay. Like if she hears secondhand that she, that uh, she was mentioned on the show, but she doesn't listen, hashtag right, cap right. on. I like to think of her, her Twitter account that hasn't been used in like five years, just suddenly <laughs> having a tweet that says cap on. <laughs> um, anyways, McGathy, should we get into some food talk? Oh, or we, got yeah. we got it. We got it. First thing I want to talk to you about, because mm-hmm. you've been living in Ireland. Yes. Mm-hmm. Food wise. First thing I want to talk to you about food wise. You've been living in Ireland, and I we talked about this a little bit when we were eating lunch beforehand, but. Is there basically no real Mexican food over there? There's there's a place called Burrito Blues, and there's some other burrito <laughs> places. Burrito there's also Blues. a place called Doughboys in Dublin. Oh, hey, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. We, we've we've we gotten. I think there's like a New York City Doughboys too. Yeah, I saw it. It's, there's a pizzeria. Turns out, not an original name. No, not at all. <laughs> it's weird though. It's just like two arguing friends who may or may not kiss, and you just <laughs> you eat near them. <laughs> no, I'm so obsessed with the idea of you guys kissing. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, the the Mexican food there, I, like I love I love Mexican food and um, just Mexican culture. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there are burrito places that have popped up that are really good, except for one thing, which is that they do not melt the cheese uh, on the food, which so is weird. so confusing. Mm. <laughs> I don't understand. If you're listening, Dublin. Melt the cheese. I agree. Hashtag melt yeah. the cheese. Melt that cheese. Melt the that is that is that's that's frustrating. You need mm. you need to have some gooey cheese in those burritos. Yeah, yeah. I just, Bur- yeah. Bur- burrito blues also uh, <laughs> sounds like when it sounds like when you're on the toilet. The burrito blue like it oh, doesn't boy. sound like a that's right. I mean, it's like a right. bad name for a, burrito blues <laughs> is a bad name. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. I agree. It's it's because it, it's it's sort of like. It's also jamming together two totally disparate cultural things like mm-hmm. Mexican food, but then also like blues from the South. It's like very strange. Yeah. There's yeah. also a place called Pablo Picante. Uh, okay. Yeah. Which is a, which is a pun off of Pablo Picasso, who is Spanish. I mean, get it together. Oh, Dublin. Got it. Get it, yeah. get it Dublin. together. Pablo Picante is cool, though. It's like Mexican wrestler themed. Oh, that's oh, fun. That's cool. Yeah. But again, no melted cheese. Also, tacos aren't really a thing. And I love I love tacos probably more than burritos. How have tacos not made it across the pond? That's strange. I don't know. Oh, uh, hmm. but there's there's another <laughs> it's so boring. I'm listing all the Mexican places in Dublin. But there's there's another place called Taco Taco, which is like Moroccan tacos. Okay. Yeah. That's weird so. that they haven't made it across the pond. 
right? Mm-hmm. There's probably a bunch of tacos floating in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue. They they're they're so little that it takes forever to get over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, and corn, <laughs> corn tortillas aren't really a thing. Um, but I'm I th- a flour I think guy, anyways. Just oh, to, really? Just to let it be known, right here, right mm. now, flour tortillas. Mm. Give me uh, flour. I'm a I'm a I'm a corn baby. Yeah, I like. I'm also a corn baby. <laughs> corn babies? What? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are corn babies. We're corn babies. Deal We're with corn it. Babies. I don't like this. <laughs> Also, there is baby corn, so it's even more confusing. Right. Baby yeah. corn fan? I like baby corn. Here's the thing I've heard. Hold on a second. What? <laughs> I've heard baby corns aren't actually corn. <gasps> what? There's some other thing that, that looks like corn, and they call it baby corns. I... Oh, please tell me it's not bugs. <laughs> <laughs> it better not be a bug. They're bugs, Mitch. Deal with it. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> yeah, oh, you I just threw they... up eight baby corns. <laughs> when did you eat those? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought baby corn was just small corn. No, I, I, apparently they're not. They're like some other thing. Hmm. No, I knew that. I knew all about it. I, I knew that they were Because you're a popcorn. I'm a popcorn. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Um, I, you know, the big, my mom is in town. And to, to, to this, this just reminds me. Hmm. I feel like the big thing, and, and, and I think we've talked about it a little bit on here, but is uh potatoes versus rice is a big thing within my mm. family like my dad and sister loved rice right mm. i love potatoes and my mom loves potatoes right which you you probably get a lot there's a lot of potatoes obviously in ireland yeah no, uh, they do love potatoes but is there is there do you, do you guys is there like a lot of is like rice like i mean and when you say that like there's not a lot of mexican food yeah. but like is 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 there a lot of rice do you eat like rice with a lot of meals or no uh, I don't. I mean, I live with my, uh, I move since I've been on the podcast, my first appearance, the voluminous come episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I, I moved oh, in with my boyfriend who is, who is Irish and he does most of the cooking and there we don't, we, we are not a rice home. I'm not a rice right. home. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was like a common, I guess in like London and stuff, there's a lot of like uh, Indian food and then I think rice just I mean, goes there, Yeah. Like that. there, there are Asian restaurants and all different, all different kinds of international cuisine in Dublin it's pretty diverse so so people are eating rice I don't I'm not a big rice person no mm. what do you in the war of rice versus potatoes what side are you on Wager? I feel like they're totally different things <laughs> but I don't they, know I get what you're saying because they're like as like a, a starch side like are it's you not saying like, this is weird everything I brought up here <laughs> <laughs> I think this is Mitch I'm with you I think this is a reasonable one-on-one because it's not like bread bread and tortillas are like mm-hmm. they're starches but you use them to contain things or to mm-hmm. hold things whereas rice and potatoes they're starches but usually have them on their own as like a dish. Let's be honest. Right, but you don't mix potatoes with like meat and sauces, do you? Hmm. I mean like like gravy is one do. thing, but like with rice like you add rice to like a curry or I think I'm opening people's eyes up to this. That rice <laughs> and potatoes are are kind of they go up against each they're other. They're similar. I mean, I get that they're both. You don't you yeah. don't get them together. Let me tell you. Why that are much. you yelling at me, <laughs> McGathy? <Dad. laughs> Mitch, sit down. <laughs> I just wow. want my parents to kiss again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take you right over to uh, what is the Ireland Air airline? Air Lingus. Air Lingus. I'll put you on an Air Lingus <laughs> plane right now and send you back <laughs> if you don't admit that potatoes versus rice is a thing it's a thing i well, like i was i was because we all were like low carb for a while yeah and i think mm-hmm. that's still so stuck in my head so i do get it and that it's like okay well if i'm going to have carbs i'm not gonna have rice and potatoes because i'm not a fucking monster mm-hmm. so i understand that and then that i would say potatoes mm, good choice weiger i'm a rice guy wow wow yeah. wow i'm a classic rice guy i, told- I mean Sorry. Go on. I was just going to say, I told my little brother that rice was bugs and ruined rice forever for him mm. when he was a little boy. That's There's awesome. so many things I'm finding out that are bugs that you think are food. <laughs> <laughs> rice, in, individual rice looks ri- like maggots. Yeah, so, individual yeah. grains of rice. I can see be getting perturbed by that. I, you- I will not mess with white rice. Oh, really? I love yeah. white rice. Isn't it nicknamed the white devil? Am I imagining that? Is it really? My mom just always says no nutritional value every time white rice is involved or rice just in general basically uh, I right. think white I think or when she's making love right. <laughs> sorry <laughs> <My God. laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> sorry. Uh, well that will be in my head for <laughs> the rest of my life um, oh, anyway sorry to sidetrack with this rice versus potatoes even though it is a thing I want to hear what side people are on hashtag if you're rice Nick 
Rice oh. is rice is nice. Hashtag rice is nice. Beautiful. And then if you're potatoes, hashtag tater gator. <laughs> Why did you say that like Larry? Like you said that like a uh, Larry the Cable Guy ish. Yeah, like later, gator. like later Gator, but Tater Gator. Oh, okay, uh, later Gator. <laughs> <laughs> but Tater Gator is more of a greeting. Like I'm going to stay a while. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not saying goodbye to it. You're yeah. saying hello to it. Now yeah. to pull it back a level, flour tortillas are the way to go, and your mm. corn tortillas, you fool. I heard you trying to say that already. Yeah. With, so Aaron, Aaron's with me too on that. Yeah. Aaron's cool. You're a fool. <laughs> If you ain't cool, you're a fool, my man. Uh, I, 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 flour, I just feel like flour, it's better. It's a better, I know that corn is more traditional, mm. but flour is better. Come I'm, on. I'm not even just, making the traditional argument. I like the taste be- and the texture better. I think it like, like the te- it's mealy though. I like that. I like the mealy texture. Yeah. I like the taste of it. I think it has a little bit more substance to it. I think it adds to, I feel like the flour is kind of. It's kind of just dead weight at times. I mm-hmm. feel like the corn uh-huh. actually enhances what you're eating. Yeah. And I like that they're smaller and that they don't hold together as well. Like the flour tortilla, it's like can sometimes be a little gummy. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah. Ugh. Not to not to bring back babies again, but the flour tortilla just feels like, okay, meh, I'm a baby. <laughs> 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 I thought something so much more clever was about to come out of my mouth and it did not. No, I, I like the corn flavor. Also, I just, I just appreciate the history of... Uh, the food and mm-hmm. i guess i just have more respect for mexican people <laughs> oh my uh, god full stop. god damn it <laughs> and now i'm in trouble because i told nick not to worry about that stuff and here i am um, uh, i'm just kidding i i had a flower quesadilla last night i was so i told nick i was so excited about eating um at the place where we ate today that i went out and got a ton of mexican food last night just, where, did you, where did you go i went to a to a taco truck and um it was great and but except my Irish boyfriend didn't understand the way that salsa works and he just saw like a bucket full of tomatoes and it was like hot pico de gallo and he mm. put it in a bag and just started eating it like a salad and then he was like ah, oh my <laughs> god spitting it out Jesus and I was such a shitty girlfriend because I was like what's wrong with you I do do that he's like I don't know I saw the salad anyway wait he just started eating it plain he didn't like dump it over chips no he he thought it was just salad that was out like a salad bar wow <laughs> Magathy, are you dating the dumbest man in ireland <laughs> <laughs> um uh yes because he's he's sweet and yeah, it's uh, never worked for me may- <laughs> <laughs> uh no he's very he's very smart we may have been um enjoying some Adult beverages. Hell before. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All you, right, this makes hey, sense. you guys drink alcohol. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Speaking now of that, cool. Yeah, it is cool. I went to, you know, <laughs> last time after we, we recorded, uh, I went to our buddy Jordan Morris had a little get together. Mm-hmm. This was last weekend. And so I took the train over there and, and met Natalie over there. And he it was at the, the Angel City Brewery. It was oh, like yeah. this brewery. That's right. They have all these beers and stuff. And I had two at, bre- at the brewery. Yeah, they have a, they have beers at the brewery. Mm, it's slow a lot down, of, yeah. slow down. Here's the thing: they brew the beer there, mm. and then you can also drink the beer on site. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have to blindfold yourself? Or no. <laughs> are you allowed to see what you're? You can see. I mm. mean, it's up to you. If you had a blindfold and wanted to be blindfolded, they'd let you do that. <laughs> also, Nick, uh, yeah. this is not weird or it, like <laughs> it's a brewery. They brew beer there, but then also you can drink beer there. That's not crazy. That's oh, we like, were play- we're playing. I was doing a lot. We were doing a bit, Mitch. <laughs> oh, you were. Yeah, we're playing along. Oh, you guys. Because she was called because I said something awkward and she had a little fun with me. So I decided. Oh, to you, you guys bitted me because I me, thought yes, I, I thought I thought when you went on that you were actually truly doing that. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, boy. Anyways, oh. I was too committed. That was my issue. You were too. See, you are good at what you do. <laughs> so. So what? So what happened at the brewery? So here's the thing. I had two brew dogs. And oh, I was so Jesus. tired. Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to go to sleep. Right, Aww. like I was so tired. I was That's like, the, Jesus I, Christ! I talk I'm about so fucking old. I, I, I say this with day drinking. You can't day day. Dr- I, I, listen, people got mad at uh, not mad at me, but people commented online or whatever. Day drinking is is you. You can only drink for like four hours or five hours right. or so, and then you're and then you're a met and yeah. then you need you need to go to bed two hats, drinks on a hot day i'm ready for a nap hats off to the sad person online that wanted to argue with you that day drinking was awesome <laughs> 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 hey man don't mess with my culture <laughs> uh I, yeah i love i i actually love day drinking but it does like ruin your whole it ruins day, your day, yeah but yeah I, like the thing i remember most anything. about day drinking is like 
be like being up at like 10 and being like groggy and like i feel yeah. like sick like that's a, like i feel like that happens every time i i drank during the day yeah i'm bad at it i'm like you i've been an old man my entire life <laughs> <laughs> because i've been visiting la i've been drinking kind of non-stop because i guess i can't hang out with people without being drunk mm. oh no are you drunk now a little bit <laughs> no i'm actually i'm not i'm not drunk now it's a shock uh Huh. This is a completely dry house <laughs> in a dry podcast, right, Nick? Yeah. Hell yeah! Um, uh, but I've had to, yeah, I've been, I've had like occasions where I've like gone out to lunch during this visit and then had a lot to drink and then gone home and then just pounded, so gross, like pounded uh, like Starbucks via coffee mm-hmm. to counteract it. Yes. Ugh. Oh, that's a, uh, you just know, makes you I, feel like a drug addict. Yeah. yeah. I learned from Kowalik, who lived in this house. I called him a loser earlier, which is true. Uh, but I will say, but I'm a loser too. You didn't. I thought you would be. I thought you would jump on board, Nick, quickly with making fun of Kowalik. What? No, I, I I'm, I'm with you. Okay, cool. I, I mean, I love yeah, Kowalik. Fuck you, Kowalik. I love Kowalik, <laughs> but he can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he used to drink Pedialyte. Oh at, yeah. Uh, in. And which is baby juice. Yeah. <laughs> so he drank this baby juice and I made fun of him, but that actually is very helpful for uh, drinking and, and a hangover. It like, uh, it does help quite a bit. If you right. chug some Pedialyte before yeah, bed yeah. or if you drink it in the morning, it is, it is, it is very, very helpful. Nick, what's your little, what's your little trick? Uh, I, you know, I used to be a Gatorade guy for Love hangovers. It. And I actually still, if I do end up in a situation where I'm really hungover, which is rare these days, but I would, I will probably go to a Gatorade and then just black coffee. Yeah. Um, and also too, McDonald's breakfast is usually a go-to for me. Gatorade is great. A nice cold Gatorade. Mm-hmm. Hashtag hello Gator. Do you guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you guys ever hair the dog? I kind of know the answer to this question because of a past podcasts like i know mitch is not a hair i'm not the dog. A, i'm not a hair of the dog i mean i have and then like the day after that i'm like dead mm. and yeah like, like i've the tried worst. it before and it makes me feel sicker i think yeah uh, i feel like i never get like past like a, like even if i like i like i never get the I never drink myself to the state where I'm like, I feel fine again or something like I, right, I right, am, right. like always like my stomach hurts or I have like this headache or I feel just like semi sick, even if it gets better from doing it the next day. But I, yeah. it never is great. Yeah, they yeah. say you're just prolonging the hangover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's water. You should be drinking, right, Liker? I mean, I've hear, I hear that, but I think you also need to replenish your nu- your nutrients. Like, yeah. I think you need to have, I think salt especially, mm-hmm. your yeah. body needs at some point. But yeah, I mean, electrolytes, that's, I still only know what electrolytes are in the abstract. I only know that they're like nutritionally important, but I think that's the thing they always say you're supposed to have. And do they shock you, electrolytes? <laughs> yeah, you get like a little shock. Mm, okay, um, so. Just a little one. Just it's put like your a, mouth, mouth around a light bulb. Yeah, <laughs> you can do that. You can pull the Uncle Fester trick. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you if you chug a Gatorade and you put a light bulb in your mouth, it will light up mm-hmm. for like what? How long? Not very long. No, no, like, but like twenty minutes. Yeah, just like twenty minutes. Have you ever done the Mentos trick where you like chew Mentos in the dark? Ooh, and it sparks. Yeah, and it sparks. Yeah, like summer camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a summer yeah. camp thing. Our, our counselor did. Or you know, our counselor did it, but like wouldn't let us do it. It was what? weird. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> our counselor really thought it was dangerous. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I remember this was like this is summer camp high hill in the fifth mm-hmm. grade, and our counselor like brought us into a shed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then like, all right, kids, I'm gonna put these Mentos on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, but yeah, turn the turn the lights down. Turn the lights down. It was dark in there, and then he did the Mentos trick. But then he just he did it it was so weird, weird because it, if the lights were on it would it's just a lot of kids staring at an adult's mouth right <laughs> all right now kids do you guys want to like hang out here in here any longer <laughs> <laughs> I went, I went who's to, good at secrets <laughs> i went to I've, I've told some stories on uh, about i went to camp fatima one year camp burgess for a few years and uh it is very weird because they're like these 18 year old to 20 three or four year old guys yeah that are in charge of all these children yeah and, and weird, weird stuff happens i was a camp counselor and then i also went to christian camps mm-hmm. uh like john daly and uh there was there was one year at the camp where i was working where like one of the head counselors 
oh this is too this is so dark like he let's hear it uh, well there's a this is an awful thing that happened at this camp i haven't said the name of the camp so it's fine but um there's there's a kid who is being picked on in the bunk and this counselor thought he was really cool I think the ca- the counselor thought the kid was cool. I thought he no, he, the, he himself, the, he was, himself cool. was cool, Got and it. he had like a bunch of campers that thought he was cool. And while the kid was sleeping, they took uh, shaving cream and they put it on the kid's back like it was um, sperm. Uh huh. Come oh. voluminous come. Oh my And God. they took th- he took pictures with his camera phone, and the kid. Like the when everyone went to sleep, like the kid was awake and was just terrorized and like snuck out of the bunk and went to the nurse and, and told her what happened. And then in the middle of the night, that counselor was escorted. Wow. Like Whoa. rightly so and, and fired. And then all those kids were so ashamed and they came into the dining hall the next day, just really sad for what they had done. And yeah. it, was, it was a, it was dark. That is, that is extreme. That is, di- yeah. but that is like, I feel like they're young weird guys who right. do it a lot of the time i uh yeah. did he wait so the reason he got in trouble i assume is because shaving cream doesn't really look like cum so it, just wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't convincing <laughs> it was a special effects camp yeah uh, he, sh- he should have used some cinnabon glaze or something is all i'm saying <laughs> jesus god that is the one thing you always get hung up on. You need you need the most realistic looking cum it's in any production. Be authentic. Uh, also, it, stop writing cum into everything you you make. <laughs> I because because like I, I really like this podcast really has was like means so much to me. Like living in a different country and what's weirdly become I didn't expect it to, and I'm not super proud that this is the case. But it's like my tether to Los Angeles in a lot of ways. And I I wanted to make a drop for a while because <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll make a sneaky cum drop right and so I, I have a bunch of screenshots of the podcast on my phone that are moments when nick says something that sounds like it's about cum like hundreds <laughs> and now it's just you know it's too late to go back he's a freak folks <laughs> <laughs> uh we'll take a quick break we'll be right back with more Doughboys. This episode of Doughboys is brought to you by Fulton & Rourke. Fulton & Rourke is a men's fragrance and grooming company that specializes in solid colognes, shave, and shower products, all designed to make getting ready easier and more enjoyable. Their travel-friendly, wax-based colognes go anywhere. Plus, there's nothing to break or spill. And of course, they all smell fantastic. Fulton & Rourke's bar soap is designed to exfoliate the skin with or without a washcloth. And GQ Magazine just named their shave cream the very best on the market today. Try it for yourself at FultonandRourke.com and save 15% off your purchase by using the code FERAL at checkout. Great jeans don't have to be complicated. If you're not into crazy stitching, diamonds, or embedded studs, you're not alone. Distilled offers luxury-grade denim at an affordable price. Jeans that would normally cost you hundreds, Distilled has starting at just $75. They utilize the same fabrics, factories, and wash houses as the best-known brands and designers while skipping the markups and middlemen. The result? Pure, unadulterated denim without the retail runaround. Just go to Distilled.com, spelled D-S-T-L-D dot com, and see where minimalist design meets maximum comfort. They guarantee the fit. They'll ship them to you for free and give you free returns until you find the perfect pair. Distilled has been featured in Forbes, Time, and TechCrunch, as well as on denim-clad celebrities and GQ and Vogue. Distilled is the only place in the U.S. you can get this quality of denim for this price point. You can find their amazing selection of outerwear, leather jackets, t-shirts, and more using the same principles of high-grade materials at low-end costs. Even celebrities are wearing Distilled. I've got a pair, and the fit is perfect. Distilled is your answer to elevated style without elevated prices. Just go to distilled.com right now and get 20% off your first pair. That's dstld.com. Go right now. Five letters, dstld.com. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Aaron McGathy. McGathy, you you told me you told me that uh that uh, anecdote, and it, it was very kind. It warmed my heart that the, that you yeah, listen right. to this podcast and it connects you to back home. Yeah, Nick and the two guys. Maybe you don't want to hear much about Nick, right. and, Nick, <laughs> Nick and Mitch. We we connect you to back home, which uh, at least we're doing some sort of something good with this podcast. Oh yeah, I I, I love it. I have tried to explain it to my Irish friends. Mm-hmm. It hasn't caught on <laughs> uh but but i but i love it just because they have different right. restaurants mm-hmm. um I, I think maybe also this is a terrible thing but i think i feel like it's like my private thing <laughs> i, I don't want great. anyone else to listen to it so wait are you rounding up uh ipod phones and ipods in ireland <laughs> that have doughboys on it mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. keeping our numbers down man <laughs> yep. Sorry. we're all about the numbers i want to be the irish listener <laughs> and got- i'm not irish the irish ireland right thing. Listener, the yeah. representative in that territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, speaking of 
Ireland. I, my mom was just saying this because we were. We, I told you we've been going around eating a bunch of stuff, so <laughs> spicy stuff. She's got an issue going on right now where she's she's had an allergic reaction. To spicy stuff is oh, making no, her no. lips. Uh, she will hate me if she knows that I'm saying this. <laughs> uh, like uh, it's making her lips puff up because of uh, spicy foods. Right. Uh, and she, my my and so I found out my grandma loves Nick. There's a look in your eyes like you're going to make some joke, and I will. And I <laughs> no, I'm afraid I, of it. I was just thinking like I, I like that you're like she'll she'll she'd hate if she heard this while you're like saying it onto our podcast and yeah. then, so i know that in your head you're so confident that your mom will never listen to this i think that she will not listen to it right i hope not at least because she'll yeah. see too much of me like she wants to know more about me and i don't tell like i can't tell her i it's that I, like i can't tell she's like how's dating life and yeah. i'm like nope i won't tell her i won't tell my mom anything you got to conceal some stuff from your parents mm-hmm. um but what were you saying you're saying about your grandma was it oh uh, yeah my grandma my grandma was she was she her her parents were from ireland and she's an mm-hmm. irish lady mm-hmm. and uh and she loved spicy food, but for the most part, it makes sense that there's not a lot of uh, Mexican food or burritos or taco stands because the, the, my, this is what my mom was saying, at least, is that the Irish don't love spicy food is is hmm. is, is a big part of it. They, they, I, right. I, don't know, I, I don't know if it's a thing of like they can't handle it well. <laughs> it's partly it's got to be partly climate based, right? Because a lot mm-hmm. of the spicy flora and fauna, they come from you know like near the equator where there's like these tropical regions where you can grow like peppers and things that have some sort of uh, what is that capsaicin in them yeah they have some heat to them yeah um, i'd say it's tr- probably not traditionally part of the irish palate yeah but there there are plenty of people who eat Ir- like spicy food yeah there. i mean my mom was trying to say that like Irish stomachs like can't handle spice. I, I think that sounds racist. <laughs> they can't handle the spice. They can't handle spice. They, yeah. they, yeah. they can't. They can't deal with it well. Which you can I drink straight pig's blood, but you can't handle spice. <laughs> it is it's spice. Spicy food has gotten to me more over the years, and it bums me out because I love spicy food. Right. Mm-hmm. That's how why the man but, versus food guy had to quit. Adam Richmond had to quit because the spice was burning a hole in his stomach. Correct. Right. That's what was going on. You just have so you you can only handle so much of it. Yeah. Also, his wife threatened to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Should have been Gabrus. <laughs> Gabrus is almost the man versus food. Are we, really? can we break that on this podcast? We'll, we'll ask oh, Gabrus after we'll we ask. If, 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 if not, we can, we can cut it out. Sorry, we'll Gabrus. This out. Gabrus uh, is almost man versus food. So it, it that, was, yeah, with John Gabrus and Adam Richmond were the final two host candidates for the uh-huh. show. They went with Adam Richmond, which, and it's a totally different show with Gabrus. But man, Gabrus would have yeah. been so great at that. Yeah, it would have been a funny, great show with Gabrus. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, uh, that's why on our chicken nutty nugget to eat, we were supposed to eat 60 nuggets in an mm-hmm. hour. That's why Gabrus ate 62. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two more than he was supposed to. Just to show Adam Richmond who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to that episode made me feel high. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of actually felt high here, too. Yeah. I bet. I bet like with, like with all the, I don't know, there's some chemical in it, some... I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But like when your body you. is close to death. Like, <laughs> yeah. you do, your brain does release a chemical when you binge eat. Right. And that's why like a lot of people are addicted to binge eating. Hmm. It kind of like calms you and makes you feel good. And huh, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk Sharkies. So, uh, Char- Sharkies is it? We talked about Mexican food not readily available in Ireland, or just at least not the way you knew it as someone mm-hmm. who used to live out in LA. Um, so, we got the what? What brought you to Sharkies as one of the chains that you potentially want to discuss on today's podcast? Uh, well, I, I definitely wanted to talk about a Mexican place, uh, just because, right. yeah, because because it's my favorite food and Mine what too. I eat mostly. Yeah, and I, I used to go to Sharkies. The, the location we went to today, even all the time, yeah. uh, especially when I was doing shows at the UCB on Franklin and IO West, and I would run in between the two places. I would like mm. stop at Sharky's and then go and do a show and or like I would go before and I don't, it was always my go to because it's pretty healthy. Wait, so we'd like sprint from an improv show to a Mexican restaurant and then <laughs> sprint from there to like a sketch show. Yeah. Yeah. Because wow. they have like cheap talk. I was like poor and you know, you could right. get like a taco and I would bring it with me. There's also a time when I was doing I t- like there, I had a crush on the tech guy at I.O. 
and I knew say his name. (laughs) Well, no, no, he's like my friend now that I'm staying with, but uh, but his name is Brandon Barrick, and I would (laughs) I had this big crush on him, and I would do a show at UCB and then make some excuse for why I needed to be at IO, even though UCB is so much cooler and (laughs) better. But I was like, oh no, I gotta be at IO, and would just wander into the tech booth and be like, oh, you're here. At your shift that you're at every week. By, w- <laughs> By the way, speaking of Hollywood like improv theaters, mm-hmm. it's it's crazy how UCB is considered cooler than IO, considering IO has like a bar in the lobby. <laughs> There's true. an actual bar. Like, how lame is IO if the UCB is still cooler and they don't have it? It's like a fucking dry theater. You know what I mean? It's so weird that that's the, what the reputation yeah, is. It's weird. I think it's not it's not IO's fault, and I I love. I I was hanging out with a bunch of IO people last night. Like there are a ton of funny people there and a bunch Mm. of super funny people from Chicago. And there's a lot of crossover, but it's like, it's run by someone who doesn't even live in the city and it's in kind of an uncool spot. Yeah. That area is like not good. The only thing going on for that, that area is there's, there's a Popeye's nearby. Yeah. Here, you know, we're talking about cool versus not cool. I'll tell you what's not cool. Comedy wars within a community. That's absolutely true. <laughs> where, which, <laughs> which place is the cooler comedy theater? Not cool. There was a time, <laughs> cool at all. There was a time when I was doing a bunch of shows at both places, and Hal Redneck. Whenever I did, I say Hal Redneck. Hal Redneck. Hal Red- Redneck. Yeah. <laughs> Hal Redneck. You just gave Redneck a new character. <laughs> <laughs> when I would see him at UCB or like a UCB party, he would say, "Ah, oh, the Queen of Io," <laughs> and it would make me like cry. I'd be like, "No, I'm not the Queen of Io," <laughs> because I was embarrassed about like how many shows I was doing there. But it was totally because I just had all these crushes. If right. only I had a huge crush on Matt Besser. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, what about Nick and I? Nick, your huge crushes on Nick and I. <laughs> Didn't bring you over to UCB. I had a crush on you. What? Whoa! <laughs> Bombshell. You knew that though. Yeah, but <laughs> you took your bike out of the stand. <laughs> Hold on now, because I had a crush on you at one really? point. Really? Mm-hmm. Probably at the same time, which shows how good I am with girls. Right. Yeah, I do remember thinking like, oh, like, oh, because you were you were dating someone and I was dating someone, mm. and then we were both like single oh, at yeah. the same time. And I and there was like I think you energy. probably thought better of it. <laughs> no, no, I remember exactly what it was. Like I like we were hanging out, and I was like, oh yeah, maybe I read this wrong. Maybe it doesn't like me because I think <sighs> I made myself very available. Man, we could have a family. <laughs> God, McGathy, what happened? I don't know. I think I thought you just thought better of it. Uh, <laughs> like I just came to my senses. After. I, th- I thought that you were like, I shouldn't touch this situation. <laughs> right. Because because uh, I remember me, I, I, we've talked about it on the podcast before, me, you and Hanford went out on a, a date. Yeah. And there was the three of us. <laughs> what? And I, I think that we both kind of liked right. you and maybe, you, the, uh, yes. Okay. Oh, got it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. We went to mass together. Is that right? Uh, no, we went to, we were at some bar Oh, together. yeah, yes. yeah, we went to a bar. I did go to Mass with Hanford. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so that Plot was the thickens. second day. Yes. I don't think it was the second, because I was at a party at your house, and in a, like, a drunk conversation, I was like, yeah, I'll go to Mass with you, and he was like, okay, and then it really happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hanford went to Mass for a while. I don't know if he yeah. still goes or not. But. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was that shitty bar. Yeah, I remember I was, like, sitting across the table from the two of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> what a sitcom scenario yes uh, uh well another killer mic situation for me here where I, <laughs> that i messed up i could have a family with yeah. mcgathy or killer mike or anyone <laughs> beautiful little irish children <laughs> wait, wait a minute we, oh yeah i guess we would still I have mean, irish, we're both irish american both irish american yes yeah. they'd oh, probably McGathy. be gross looking then <laughs> <laughs> i would i would be calling your i would be saying oh mom's call it coming over that's true yeah I don't know. I, we, I, we, I've, I'm sure that I probably would have moved away and given up on Hollywood if I had some sort of family. Uh, yeah. But think, maybe been happier. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I don't think I would live here is what I'm saying. Right. I, th- I think things would be brighter in some way <laughs> if I had some sort of family. Yeah. This is just a, this isn't like some sliding doors where it's like, oh, which reality is better where you're, mm-hmm. you're trying to like, uh, oh, each has its ups and downs. Like this is just yeah. like a clear. And now I'm getting awkward because you told me this. McGaffey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, let's- I figured I figured that that was the ca- I knew I kind of in my head thought that, but I'm so afraid. I'm afraid. I'm a scared man. Nick, help me out here. You yeah, know the- you're scared, man. We're both ruled by fear. Yeah, that's yeah. the dominant emotion in each God of our lives. I am, yeah, I am blushing a little now. Ah. Guys, 
let's <laughs> barrel past this and just talk about just the tell fucking me, food we put in our bodies. Just tell me you thought better of it. Just tell me, that, <laughs> tell me something to make me feel better. Sometimes it's better to be friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Anyways, I have my mom here at least. <laughs> Funny. Uh, 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 no, I did not think better of it. You you missed out. Damn. Wow. Well, story of my life. Anyways, back onto my true love, food. <laughs> so sharkies. No, it's fine. It would have been terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would have been out. the best thing of your life. <sighs> it, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked out. But it would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Sharkies, I got the Fiesta Burrito uh, with steak <laughs> and a whole wheat tortilla, and I got it wet style, uh, which they put a little sauce on it. So, let me bring, read off the ingredients of the Fiesta Burrito. Uh, rice, organic rice, organic beans. I make a big point of saying organic before things. Cheese, guacamole, sour cream, and salsa verde. Um, the whole wheat tortilla was a pretty good texture to it. Uh, you know, like sometimes you get those wheat tortillas, and they're, they're a little grainy, and they, they don't have a lot of flavor. But this was pretty good. The wet style, the the sauce they put on top of it. I told, I met, remarked on this, and and Dustin got a similar dish. Uh, we were all there. McGathy, I remarked on this, but like the sauce was like kind of like a marinara. It was like a very oddly sweet yeah. red sauce, not really pretty distinct from what I would expect from. You know, I was expecting more of like an enchilada sauce, but it was pretty sweet I and it kind of overwhelmed it. Yeah, it literally looked like spaghetti sauce. It really did. It was really <laughs> weird. It's oddly like marinara. Um, but the the burrito contents were good. I think I just wouldn't get it wet again. And you, you know, normally when I when I've been to Sharky's in the past, I'm a uh, I, I'm very much of like a plate guy. Like mm-hmm. they have good plates and they have good salads, and you can kind of eat on on the healthy side there. And that's usually what I do. And often it's been a work lunch in the past, and that's usually the direction I go. Um, so this might have been the first burrito I've had there outside of catering, because sometimes the people it'll end up as a catering place here in LA. But it was it was a well executed burrito. I liked all the ingredients. The meat was high quality. Good good pinto beans inside. Um, we also got the spicy four cheese stone fired pizza, which. McGathy, you and I remarked beforehand, we didn't really know there was pizza on the menu. Yeah. And we were like, fuck it, we should try this thing. So I ordered one for the table, and it was a little different than I think either of us expected. Yeah, it wasn't anything like pizza. It it was, it reminded me of something that maybe my dad would have made for me and my brother after my mom died. Like, oh, I know, I, I'll, I'll make you kids pizza and take right. crackers out of the pantry <laughs> and then melt cheese on it and be like, isn't this great? We're fine. We're okay. Uh, Cause it, yeah, it didn't, it didn't really, like, I can't imagine anyone ever craving that. It wasn't yeah. bad, but it was, it was weird. It was like the, the, the big thing is the base of it was just a, a big long, is this big old, like, giant tortilla. Mm-hmm. And so it was just so thin and, like you were saying, crackery. Yeah. And then they, in that wood fire oven, it actually got a little burned, mm-hmm. which is like sometimes you get that burn on a pizza and it's like good. Like that burned crust is like kind of like, you know, the appeal of some of those, those New York style pizzas. But, but here, it just like that burned tortilla just, it loses all the flavor and it just tastes yeah. it's, it's just tastes burned kind of reminded me of like a jalapeno flavored what's the cracker that you eat at P- passover oh a matzah oh matzah yeah it was very matzah like yeah yeah absolutely yeah it, it was weird it was very strange i would not get that again no I, it felt like a real misfire i was honestly curious as to why they even have those on those on their menu because like who, yeah, orders who, who these? craves that who's like i want to because they used to have something similar at taco bell the mexican, mexican pizza, pizza. yeah that used to be a do they still have that uh they might still have it on the menu do they still got that mexican pizza mitch yeah i believe they do i feel like i got it last like not last time I went, but I feel like I got it fairly recently there. I used yeah. to order that when I was a kid and uh, like eat it really messy in front of my neighbor kids and get it all over my face and pretend I didn't know what was happening. And that was like my thing. <laughs> just for laughs? Yeah. That's I would a lot order, of fun. I would order that and the, and the nachos and just be like, oh, what? What? Something's on my face. And they'd be like, it's on your face. <laughs> That's no. funny. What, what was the age difference here? Uh, I think they were my well. It'd be it'd be my neighbors. So they were like two girls that were my same age, and then okay. two two younger boys that were my brother's age. So like four years younger. Got it. Because because some that could be a bit where you're trying to entertain a kid younger than you, you know. Yeah. But yeah. it could also be a bit where you're just doing it with your peers, which is what sounds like the scenario. Yeah. I'm glad we we got to the bottom of that. So um, <laughs> also some chips. Uh, I got the avocado salsa and the fire roasted salsa. 
neither of them particularly spicy. They both said mm-hmm. hot, mm-hmm. and I think they were being overly cautious. Maybe because they're in a touristy area, they're kind of by that Hollywood strip. Yeah, so yeah. maybe they're, they're. I'm kind of okay with uh, the level of spiciness in their sauces. Yeah, but it's yeah, not. Like it's not. Sauces. It's they're good, but they're not super spicy. Like if you read the hot and are expecting uh, something that's gonna gonna singe your tongue, if you're you're a little bit of a heat seeker, mm-hmm. um, and as I think you are, Aaron. I, I don't think it's going to quite deliver. Well, yeah. I, I think that they like they, they have like good flavor. Like they they are they're still good flavor even without the, you know. Because I feel I like, agree with you. They're well made. They, yes. they taste fresh and they're flavorful. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. In which I feel like a lot of times like th- th- those sorts of salsas are just inherently spicy, right? Because they're using some chilies or whatever. But uh, th- these ones they they taste great. They, I think they taste really really good. I, th- yeah. I, I think that Paquito has better salsas than Sharky's, right? But they're not they're not bad. They're not bad salsas. Even though I did not have any salsa today. I fu- look. I got yours. You to didn't go. fuck up. You I helped me to, out. But I forgot to get you a salsa. I apologize for that. That's okay. It was a it was a dry. It was a dry. <laughs> you had the wet burrito. I had the dry burrito. Uh, mm. wait, and you, Nick, you got the the Fiesta burrito. You said, yeah, that's the one I got for me. You that's, got the. I think the one you asked for was the it, um, Santa Fe light. Yeah, Santa Fe light. And that's and and like McGathy was saying, this place is like. I feel like a ton of people within this com- UCB community or something went to Sharky's all the time. Maybe because yeah. it is in that weird spot. Yeah, it's cheap and it's by. like healthyish. And you can f- f- get something, and it's all—it's like, and you can get something there, <laughs> unlike other places that refuse you. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's cl- it's clean in there, and right. the salsa bar is really nicely maintained. It's Great like salsa awful bar. When you go into like a gross salsa bar, no, it's situation. really. Here's it's really something well I'll say about that: two things. One, always a lot of cops in that shark. Yeah, there were cops there today. It's weird. Cops, cops love. It. Love Sharkies for whatever reason. Do yeah. you think it's because they're sh- like they think they're sharks? Mm. That they like cops like sharks are the like, streets. Yes, there's I, a psychological street sharks. There's street sharks. They're street sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an association like sharks. I'm a shark. I'm going yeah. to Sharkies. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go yeah. to what's another Mimi's Cafe. I'm mm-hmm. not a I'm not a lady. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fucking Mimi. Yeah, I'm a shark. Yeah. Popeyes. What? I'm not. I'm not a cartoon. <laughs> I'm a shark. I'm a yeah. sharky. Um, <laughs> I, I. I think. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's it is semi healthy. Or here's the other thing. That area right there. There's 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 always a little. It can be a little. Test that area can be a little dicey. test dicey. Thank yeah. you. That's right. where I was looking for. So maybe there's a lot of mental illness. A lot of mental illness display. right there. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think in like the, and just a lot of people too. in the dozen yeah. times that I've gone to that Sharkies or whatever, or probably more, I feel like at least a quarter or more, there's been like a weird interaction. And I'm not mm. even, I'm not blowing uh, this out of proportion. Like yeah, for yeah. real. And it, it, like, like I a lot of the it. time it's a weird little hot, hot bed right there of, of, yeah. of some, some sad stuff in a lot of ways. So, uh, so wait, do we think this cop phenomenon is localized to the Hollywood Sharkies? Or are we saying it's across all two dozen Sharkies I've locations? Only, I, I've only seen it at this Hollywood Sharkies, but then it makes me feel like because there's a little hotbed of, of kind oh, of, they're a, just there anyway. Is, is it because they're there? Like, mm. I don't know. I don't know if it's a, if it's causal or, or, or what it is. I wonder but. if they get a discount. Cause I mentioned to a friend mm. that I was doing Sharkies for Doughboys, and her, at her Sharkies in a different part of LA, she said that there were always cops. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Inter- yeah. Okay. They could have, they could have a little LAPD discount or something like that. Or their Sharkies is some sort of like crime ring and, they're it's in a, the pocket. The the <laughs> cops are in the pocket of the crime. I mean, it's right there. In or the it's name. undercover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's right there. In the <laughs> it's name. actually the police precinct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's secret. It's a secret police HQ. Mm. I think it's a front for the vicious singing Puerto Rican dance gang known as the Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> they launder their money through there. Jesus. Our <laughs> listeners, I, I guess they'll get that. That's not that crazy. West Side of a Story. Yeah. Everyone loves West Side Story. Yeah. Um, Mitch, what, so what did you think of that Santa Fe light burrito? First of all, this is a thing McGathy pointed out. They call their low fat, low calorie menu the naked menu. Yeah, which it's made embarrassing. both of we, we everyone got very uncomfortable just even looking at that. Get it naked. It says right at the top, lower yeah. fat and lower calories. Come on, yeah, yeah. that's not cool. You, yeah, you guys have pointed this out on the podcast before that it's, it's so embarrassing. Like the the low the healthy menu always has some sort of embarrassing like. I'm the worst. Can right. I get the stupid asshole meal? <laughs> or yeah. Being naked. No one's like, oh, yes. Great. No, because you it, don't want to be sexy. So it's just humiliating. Right. It's it's very embarrassing. And 
But I will say the burrito is actually good, and that's the worst part about it. If you just put Santa Fe <laughs> light burrito under the burritos, people will be like, hey, I'll get that. It's light. It's a yeah. lighter version of the burrito. So it, it comes with chicken, non-fat cheese, guacamole, pico de gallo, low-fat whole wheat tortilla. It's 605 calories. Not bad. It's a big burrito, Nick. Yeah, you saw yeah it's, it's very, pretty, super, fi- like, there, there's a lot of food in there. It's got, I'm sure that was pretty filling. How is it the was, cheese? It was, for sure. The cheese was all right. It, it, and you know what? It was a little not melty. And maybe that's... It's hard to melt low fat cheese. Yeah, that's exactly. What, I, think yeah, that yeah. Was a, I think that's a part of it. But it was still... It was, it, was, it was good. And I feel like with... Like you were saying, I don't like when Sharky's... When you get a spread of Sharky's because I feel like if you're getting just like the chicken on its own, it's just kind of is like, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? It's right. not great uh, when you get like the big trays of Sharky's and it's all getting right, catered yeah. or whatever if you're shooting or working or whatever. But uh, getting uh, the burritos there are are decent. Like they're not bad, and the, like they fill that like in that in in a way. It's almost like how I talked about Subway or something, where I'm like, oh, I can get a turkey sandwich at Subway, right? And just it's okay, and it's not terrible for me, and it's takeout food, but it's and it's easy, it's easy, and it's filling, and it's kind of like Sharky's is like that. I think Sharky's is better tasting food than Subway in 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 a lot of ways. Yeah, but, I think better ingredients too. But it yeah. is kind of like the it's like 